So, everybody, good afternoon. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Jeff White, whose new book, Time.com, was published this week and has gone straight to being the number one bestseller for computer security on Amazon. So, <laughs> Jeff, thank you for taking time for shopping for Lamborghinis and whatever it is you do when you're a best-selling author. But we're, we're delighted to have you along today. Now, you've got an introduction, I think, to show us about how, how it was that you got into this world and the sort of sources you found. So let's sure. start with that, maybe. Let's do that. There we go. Good stuff. Uh, oh, that is the cover of the book. Yes. So that is, that's crime.com. That's the, the, the book that I've just published. Um, Available in all good booksellers now. Yes. And indeed some bad booksellers. Yeah. Um, look, so what I wanted to do with the book, the reason I wrote it, the reason I, I was keen to write it was there isn't really a book that covers the whole of cybercrime, the whole of cybersecurity. There are great books about individual hacks and individual people. And they're really, really good. And there's a whole further reading list in my book, which points out some of these. But there wasn't a book that, so my mum, for example, my mum's never going to read a book about the Stuxnet attack on Iranian nuclear facilities. Big, fascinating as it is, it's too niche. So for my mum, I wanted to have something that I could say, okay, you know that cybercrime thing that I do, here it is, here's all of it. And by the end of this, you'll pretty much understand the whole thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go from the beginning right to the end. I wanted to make connections. There were things that happened back in the 70s that are relevant to things that happened over the last year. So you know, writing a book about the whole thing, you can make these connections, span quite a lot of time, quite a lot of a lot of incidents. So in order to try and make it usable for the general public and suitable for the general public, I tried to break cybercrime down into three groups, three sets of people, um, as represented by these three lovely fellas here. Um, <laughs> maybe some of the people watching might recognize these guys, I don't know, but I will take yeah. you through them so that we know who they are. This, this is Evgeny Bogachev. He is... Um, uh, I sort of described him really as a sort of Steve Jobs of cybercrime. He, he, he brought together a whole bunch of stuff that was already out there, but he made it super easy to use, super effective, super slick. He was basically a sort of Silicon Valley entrepreneur for cybercrime. And he made it a business. Right? He made it yeah. a business, absolutely. And he made yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars is, is what he made. Um, he is still at large. Uh, there was an operation to capture him, which is detailed in my book, which went sideways pretty badly. He escaped, uh, as he'd done many times before. Is believed still to be in Russia. Um, obviously, can't travel now because he's got an FBI warrant out against him. And I sort of, I spoke to one of the police officers who was investigating his case, and I said, you know, isn't it annoying that he's not in handcuffs? You never managed to get him in prison. And this guy sort of looked in the distance. He said, well, you know, he's somewhere in Russia. He's probably working for the Russian government, and therefore he's got Russian government minders, and he's working with Russian government computer equipment. That's punishment enough. So that's that's how he <laughs> felt about it. Getting... Um, this chap, this is Park Jin Hyok. Um, ah, yes. He is part, allegedly, according to the FBI, is part of the North Korean uh, Lazarus hacking group uh, who've broken into various establishments, notably Bangladesh Bank, where they tried to steal, where they did steal $81 million, tried to steal a billion. Um, how come I've got his picture if he works for one of the most secretive states in the world? Well, North Korean hackers, much as they're taught to hate the US, uh, they, they love Gmail and, and, and Facebook and Twitter as much as the rest of us. So when the FBI were investigating the hack, they found a Gmail account that was suspect. They hit Google with the warrant. And Google obviously gives them a warrant, gives them access to access that Gmail account. And uh, sure enough, Mr. Park here was on his way to a new job in China. And he'd forwarded his CV with his picture ahead of time. So the, you know, so this is me, this is my skills and so on. So the FBI got hold of his picture. Um, and this chap uh, is Jake Davis. Um, Jake, Jake doesn't look like this anymore. He looks very different and his life is very different. Now. This was taken, he was a, a founder member of a hacking group called Lulzsec, who mm. were a spin-off of the Anonymous movement. And what, I, what fascinated me about Jake and his buddies was it, they weren't the first people to hack. They weren't the first people to hack and leak stuff online. They were one of the really first groups to, to fully master how to make the media take notice. They were media manipulators extraordinaire. You know, the, the, the timing of the hacks, the way they would flam them up, the, the way they would publicize them, that was all really astutely done. And what it meant was, you know, if you got hacked by Lulsa, you really knew about it. So these three chaps for me sort of cover the three types of groups I'm talking about. Mr. Park is nation state hacking, government hackers. Evgeny represents organized crime, money motivated criminal gangs. Get rich quick, get as much money as you can, as easily as you can, and get out. And then Jake represents a sort of hacktivist movement, the idea of hacking for political uh, or, 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 or media kudos. Um, the, the sort of joker in the deck, if, if you like. And so for me, those three groups 
swept into the kind of main groups you come across. In day, days gone by, you could separate those groups out and you could say, well, we've been hit by a nation state or a hacktivist attack. But increasingly, they're, they're coming together. They're learning from each other. And so you're starting to see nation state groups using the tools of organized cybercrime, using their same software. And so what that does is, A, it, it means they cross-fertilize each other. But also, if you get hacked now, you don't quite know whether it was a government that did it or an organized cybercrime. And again, governments are learning from the hacktivists like Jake. If you look at the media manipulation that goes on now, they've learned the lessons of people like Lulsec, how to get journalists interested, how to get the story out there, how to make maximum impact. So my whole point in the book is the confluence of these three sets of people is what's made cybercrime big and a big threat uh, uh, in today's society. So that's sort of roughly speaking where I've come from with the book. Um, so I will, yes, I'll now hand back and we can, we can have a chat now that maps out the territory. No, no, I think that's a great introduction for people into the, the different mal actors that may be out there. And I know there's been suggestions in the past that in certain less, more law, lawless parts of the world, that if you are a successful cybercrime hacker, when the police come knocking on your door, they're not coming to give you handcuffs. They're, they may be coming to give you a job because it's sort of nudge, nudge, wink, wink. If you, if you help hack for the state Monday to Tuesday, you can do what the hell you want Wednesday to Friday, as long as you're hacking those, you know, over these enemies of the state. And I suppose that makes it all the harder for law enforcement to ever catch up with people when they're now protected by the states where they're living. Indeed. And, and it was, it was yeah. there was actually, um, in, in the Russian example, there was um, a site called Bad B, a hacker called Bad B, who set up a site, I think, called badb.biz. And on the front page of this website, there was a piece of animation that showed Vladimir, a cartoon of Vladimir Putin pinning medals on computer hackers as though they were being sort of rewarded for hacking for the Russian state. And the animation, that the, the, the text said, you know, um, we are basically hacking these credit cards for Mother Russia. The more income we pull into Russia, you know, the, the more powerful Russia gets, the weaker, you know, our, our opponents get. So, you know, that, that link between feeling like the government will, will support you if you do the right hacking, it was absolutely front and center. 